Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for coming. Obviously, uh, this is an exciting week. Uh, we've all been looking forward to this for, for a couple of years now. And uh, unfortunately, I have no extra tickets. So I don't have <laughs> tickets. Um, but it gives me great pleasure, obviously, being from North Carolina, that you know, through all the hard work with Adam and with uh, the city, we were able to bring the All-Star game here. Somewhat delayed over the last couple of years, but nevertheless, it's here. And uh, I can't be more proud about how the city has responded, uh, the organizations responded, the efforts from, you know, behind the scenes from a lot of people within the organization and within the city to finally get the opportunity to bring this game here. Um, I was here in 1991 uh, when the game was here and played at Tavola uh, over there uh, where uh, quite quite naturally the fan support was unbelievable. Uh, I do remember the game. Had a decent game, didn't win MVP, but to, it was a fun game. Um, but we look forward to bringing that same type of energy back. Um, so far it's been, you know, as I said, uh, the energy has been unbelievable from, from the staff and from the city. Um, we also look forward to getting in within the community, making sure that we support uh, the community around the city. Uh, but the energy is unbelievable. And I think it's going to be a fun week, no matter what the weather is going to be. I think the fans that are coming here from out of town is going to see what this city is all about and the dedication that they put forth in putting on an event here in Charlotte. So uh, thanks for coming out, and hopefully you can pass that positive message to the, to the fans and to the community. We are very supportive. And once again, with all the workers behind the scenes, uh, they have done an unbelievable job, and uh, I, got, I know I got a lot of work to do, but these guys got a lot of work to do for the next week, but we're going to represent the city 100% in, in the right frame of mind and from a classy standpoint. So with that, I pass it to Fred, who loves to talk, <laughs> uh, but I'll let him finish it off. No, th thanks, Michael, and uh, as you all know, we are extremely excited here at, Sport at Hornet Sports and Entertainment. <clears throat> And really looking forward to hosting a great All-Star Week, not weekend. Um, I want to thank Michael and uh, Curtis Polk, our managing partner, for all of their support throughout this whole entire process and really uh, supporting our efforts to, to, to bring this game here, <coughs> not just for our organization, but also for the city of Charlotte. Um, you know, this is going to be the largest sporting event that's ever been held in this city and probably in the state. And so for us to be able to host it is, is just an honor. Um, you know, hosting events like this, is, it, it takes a collaborative effort by a lot of people. Um, Michael mentioned our staff uh, here at the Hornets. I mean, I can't talk enough about just how everyone in our organization has rolled up their sleeves and made a commitment to make sure we're successful throughout the week. I also want to thank uh, everyone at the NBA, uh, Kelly Flato and her team have been on the ground for almost a year, working day in, day out uh, with, with our staff, with the uh, city of Charlotte, uh, folks from Mecklenburg County, CRVA, everybody's been on board and working together to make sure that we represent our city well. You know, these type events will take some patience, so we do hope that uh, our citizens in the, in the region will understand the street closures, uh, the added security, the expected large crowds. Uh, hundreds of events, of events will be taking place throughout our community over the weekend. Um, you know, this event will be, will be broadcast in over 200 countries, 40 different languages and dialects. There'll be over 1,800 media people uh, in our community and an estimated 150,000 visitors to our community. It truly is an opportunity for us to put our great city on the global stage. You know, the estimate, estimated economic impact for our region is in excess of $100 million. And so the part-time workers that will be working over the weekend, earning extra dollars, we're, we're grateful for that. Through the NBA CARES initiatives, as Michael mentioned, the league will leave a lasting legacy even after the weekend ends. I, too, was here at the 1991 game, not as a player, but as one of those 20,000 fans uh, in the arena over on Tyvola enjoying the weekend. 2019 All-Star will bring, will bring the best basketball players in the world right here to our city. It's going to be a great time for them to compete, to entertain, and help grow our game. And we look forward to a great week 
of events. Thank you. No, uh, frankly, no. I think an issue growing up as a, as a kid here in North Carolina, the first thing is, is to play basketball. And then things evolved from that. You know, went to the University of North Carolina, then go to Chicago. Obviously, you know, you guys know the history from that. And then be able to have an opportunity to come back and represent the state in an all-star situation from a different seat. Um, it's, it's truly amazing. It tells the path in terms of what that I've taken. Uh, very grateful pass, path, and uh, I, I, it gives me great pleasure to be able to present that you know, back to the to the community. So it's, as I said, it's been a long traveled road, and I've been on both sides of the spectrum, and I don't, I do not have any doubt that an enjoyment is going to be the same. A little bit more work on this side than what I had to do on the other side. Uh, before I just showed up on Friday, pass, put a ball in my hand, and go play. This time is a little bit more activity, but the pleasure is still the same. Michael, Nick Carboni from NBC Charlotte. Can you just kind of expand on the last few years with you and your team, a collaborative, collaborative effort, as Fred said, of not getting the game and then sitting here this week and being able to present it? Well, it was a, it was a con consistent effort, you know, not just uh, from us as an organization, but from the league, uh, from the community. Um, we would look forward to having the game two years ago. And obviously things happened, and we dealt with those situations and moved it you know, two years later. I think a lot of good things has come about since then, and, and we'll continue to do that. And I think it, it shows the persistency of how things, if you have a vision about how you want things to happen and, and you put forth the effort, then here we are two years later. Um, which, in essence, I think could be a, you know, a great experience, good learning experience, but I think a great opportunity too. And I think Fred and and, and uh, I think he's he's taking the leadership of going through all the meetings, going down to Raleigh, making sure with the league that we eventually get the All Star game. And the effort was, you know, uh, I guess you know, from the league standpoint as well as from all the people that he he communicated with, it was a it's a it was a great effort by everybody to get this game and. Um, I'm very happy that the day has finally come. Michael, uh, Scott Fowler from the Charlotte Observer. As a player, uh, I wonder if you could compare and contrast the way it was in the 90s playing NBA versus now. And particularly, like, I can't remember, did you, did you play hard defense in the All-Star game? <laughs> Do you? How did I know that was going to get twisted into this whole conversation? But, uh, I mean, it's a different time, obviously. And... Um, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to represent the fans, it's about playing with your heart and your passion. You know, and the thing is, is that uh, if you ask any basketball player, even today, I mean, even within the generations, you play the game for the love of the game. So every chance you get to play the game, you play it with the intensity of, of playing hard. And the fans see that. And that's where you bond with the fans when you do that. Defense is a part of it. Offense is a part of it. You know, showcasing your talent, understanding who you're playing with, competing against your fellow players, all that is a part of the whole process. And that's the story that in the presentation that you try to present to the fans. Uh, and it's been going on for years. Uh, and, and I think it will continue. Uh, and once again, it's, it's all predicated on how you perceive yourself performing and, and what you're trying to showcase to, to the fans that are watching. So it is a little different. The players are different. But the idea of you know showcasing and playing and representing and, 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 and saying thanks to the fans is the same. Uh, it's just a different voice. Uh, my voice is a little different than the, the voice of today. But I, I think that the, the passion of the game of basketball is, no, is not different than what it was years ago. Kelly Bardick, WCCB. Michael, do you have any suggestions for Miles Bridges in the dunk contest? Uh, have fun. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing Miles. I think he's a very gifted uh, athlete and a basketball player. It's not just you know jumping and dunking, uh, as you know, there's other aspects to the game. But it's an opportunity to showcase what those talents are and how you can, uh, how the fans would enjoy that. Uh, he's a unique kid. Uh, I'm very proud of him as well as Kemba. I forgot to mention 
having Kim as an all-star gives me great pleasure because I always believed this kid was an all-star. And he's proven that you know, three years in a row and this year being a starter. Uh, so he represents the city very well and the organization very well. And I think Miles will do the same. I'm anticipating some creativity. Now, you know, the, the dunk contest, ironically, is a very difficult creativity. I mean, we took off from the free throw line. I don't expect anybody taking off from the top of the key. You know, so, but you're going to see a lot of different creativity from a, from a, you know, a young crowd. And, and obviously, it should be fun for the fans to see. So I'm looking forward to that and definitely looking forward to seeing Kimmer play an all-star game. From WSOC in Charlotte, you're kind of in a unique position as both the owner of the host team and also kind of an ambassador for the league as well. I'm wondering how you see those roles intersecting throughout the weekend. Uh, it's, it's very similar. You know, I mean, obviously being able to be on the other side to understand from a player's perspective what this weekend represents and the proudness that you, you know, that you have for your family, your friends, and your, even for yourself and the organizations. And then on the other side of it, to be able to look at a guy like Kimmel Walker and, and Miles Bridges and the organization for the effort that they put forth to put on an event like that, that's why I have an advantage over a lot of people that be on both sides. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to be able to present both sides to the fans so they understand the difference, understand the, the efforts you know, by everybody involved. Uh, and it's unique. So I like to say that I am a little different than most people. And rightfully, I've, I've been on both sides, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to having the fun on this side. It's a different fun, you know, because I live vicariously through the talents that's played on the basketball court and the energy that the fans give. But on the other side, I was able to generate that, you know, for, from a basketball sense. So uh, I'm anxious to see how, you know, how, the, how different it is. A uh, lot harder on this side uh, than actually putting on a uniform and going out and shooting the jump shots and taking off in the free throw line of the dunk contest, you know. So, I mean, uh, but either way, it should be fun. Hey, Michael, Kyle Bailey, WFNZ. Um, Fred mentioned the legacy of this event, and obviously this organization is a, a big part of this city's identity. What would you like the legacy of this event to be in terms of both the organization, how it might impact that, but also the city? I think it's important that, uh, for everybody that comes to visit this city during this All-Star game, understand this is a very unique and fun, small town city that everybody would love to come back and visit, even when this All-Star game is not here. Uh, for us who live here, we understood it to be a unique city, fun place to be. Uh, small city, not in New York, not in LA, not in Chicago, but still, you can drive your car, you don't have to take Uber, you can do a lot of things, uh, and you meet great people. You know, So that, to me, is the biggest takeaway of the weekend, is that for people who come and understand you know, what this city is all about and the people that live here. Um, and they love to come back even when it's not an all-star game. Um, and I think we have a great sense of pride about showcasing that to the visitors. Hey, Michael, Rick Pinnell, the Shell Observer. Um, you have a homegrown all-star starter in this game. I just wondered how you felt that Kemba was perceived by the community and how you think at this point when there's going to be so much attention on this town, how you think the team's perceived? I'm very proud, even though it may not look like it, about Kemba Walker. I, from, day, from day one we drafted him, I always thought it was something special about this kid. I remain and still confirmly believe that. Uh, I think you know it's still up to us, uh, as well as an organization, to make this city proud about his team. We're still committed to do that. Uh, I think today, or you know, this weekend, is about Kemba Walker and Miles Bridges. And once this is over with, I think we still have to look at ourselves about making this city proud about the game of basketball and how we play it on an everyday basis and not just during the All-Star break. So um, this weekend, it's a prideful thing. I'm very proud about the commitments from the organization with our players. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do in terms of making uh, fan base even more prouder about playing in June. Yeah, to me, that's still a major focus for me, major. Uh, Michael, Eric Spanberg from the Business Journal. Uh, you mentioned it's harder being on the side you're on now. I'm curious, uh, Forbes just valued the team at $1.25 billion. It was about $300 million when you bought it. Having the whole league here, sort of a stamp of approval, 
could you maybe just share a little perspective on what the journey's been like on the business side and where you you see the health of the franchise at the moment? Well, I think what everybody's looking at is obviously from, from my initial investments of where the teams evolved to. But I think when you have to look at the league and where the league is involved to, um, it's not just Charlotte. It's a lot of other franchises that's grown. And I think it says a lot about the game of basketball being played from a global standpoint and how, you know, the league and, they, and Adam Silver, and as long as, as well as the uh, leadership of the organization over the NBA, has taken the game and grown it from when I played. Uh, so that is a testament. That's what the Forbes basically says. Uh, everybody wants to look at my involvement in the whole process, but you got to look at the bigger picture. The game has grown. And it will continue to grow because of the globalness of how the game is being perceived. And I think the league has done an unbelievable job in presenting that, not just to the, you know, the U.S. or Europe, but you know, India, China, all these other uh, places. So uh, that is gratifying. That is, you know, to me, says a lot about the game that I played and how it has progressed uh, from a player as well as from ownership. Uh, Richard Walker, Gaston Gazette, obviously for both of you guys. I know, Fred, you had a connection, I guess, in Greensboro back in 71 with the ABA All-Star Game. Michael, you played in the game. It used to be that the NBA was – that the All-Star Game was the way to get on TV. We've changed a lot since then. Is it – do you think back about how daunting it is, how amazing it is that you're a part of – the game comes to you, you have to bid to have it. I mean, back in probably 71, I think – Greensboro got it just because not many people in the ABA wanted the game. I mean, yeah. it's really remarkable how much it has changed and your two unique perspectives on being a part of the history of the ABA and the NBA All-Star Games. Well, I didn't know much about the 71. <laughs> <laughs> I was only eight years old at that time. But I, I do understand the 91 and, and obviously 2019. And once again, I'd say that the growth of basketball and the interest within the game of basketball has grown tremendously. The business around basketball has just has grown just as much. Um, and yes, it's a bidding process. It's a bidding process in the sense that it, most cities want to be able to present the game on their platform uh, from a business aspect as well as from a prideful and being able to uh, showcase their city. You know, and next year's in Chicago, which is very uniquely you know, connected with myself as well. But you know, you can understand why. Uh, every city would love to host something like this because of the uh, the business as well as the passion that follows the game of basketball. We haven't had this kind of attention on a global scale since 1991. Almost 30 years later, what are you really hoping to showcase to the world about the city of Charlotte? Well, just to Michael's point, what a great city it is to, to live, work, and, and play and raise families. and. You know, we truly believe that when we get an opportunity as a community to host a global event, that we all pull together in the community and make sure it's successful. And then that gives us the opportunity to host the next global event. And so we truly believe that us hosting the 2012 Democratic National Convention allowed us this opportunity because the NBA felt like, you know, we executed in a, in a great way. And we believe landing this all-star game helped us land the 2020 Republican National Convention and anytime we can put our city on the global stage and have a huge economic impact for our region and our, cit our citizens, I think we in the community want to make sure that people get a chance to see this city that ordinarily wouldn't have even taken a look at our city. Michael Fox, Will Kunkel, Fox 46 here in Charlotte. You mentioned putting the city both of you guys have on display. What about putting the Hornets on display, the team on display, not only for the community to kind of dive back in and get in the building and for free agents or for players just around the country as well, the franchise more than just the city? Well, I mean, it goes to my point. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, people from outside the spectrum of, uh, of Charlotte or North Carolina is going to see the city and understand even though it may be a small market, this could be a destination. You never know. I think Kemba Walker starting is an illustration of what the organization and the, and the type of players that we are trying to attract and grow from within. So I think that is, from a Hornet standpoint, on display this this week, uh, and you know we got a lot of a lot of work to do, as I said, and a lot of choices to be made to get to that level. But it starts with the presentation of what this city is all about for other people to see and understand that it may be a small market, but it's a unique city to be, and the fan base totally comes out and support. They support the game tremendously. Ninety-one, they did that, you know, and here we are, twenty years or thirty years later and basically doing the same thing. 
Robin with the athletic. Going back to the slam dunk contest, just wondering with Miles being in this year, just when you look back on your uh, you know opportunities to compete with Dominique and whatnot, what do you remember most about those? And do you think those contests actually help grow the game to where it is right now? What, what I remember most, two North Carolina boys going at it. You know, people don't realize he was from Washington, North Carolina. I'm from Wilmington, two extremes. And it gives us great pride that, you know, that type of showmanship, that's always going to be a connected bond between me and him. And I think it, it brought a different, it's like the All-Star game having a baseball All-Star, like having a home run derby. You know, it was a part of the phase of the creativity and the uniqueness of what those individuals brought to the game itself. It wasn't defining who we were. It was a part of who we were. Uh, and being that both players came from North Carolina, that is the connection that I remember the most about Dominique and myself. Hey, Michael, Adam has said a couple of things recently that I found kind of interesting. One of them is very specifically related to what's going on this weekend. He said that how are well you articulated the day that they decided that they had to pull the game from here, that you said you were completely supportive of the, the reasoning on that, and that you hoped that all the work that everybody had done wouldn't get wasted. Adam said, you know, you really connected those two things in a day that, that, that he said pushed people in the right direction. Along the same lines, this summer, at, at, you know, when, when he spoke after the Board of Governors meeting, sure. he said that you have been really, really valuable as a connector as far as an owner who knows how a player feels. He said he needs that perspective. I just wondered how you feel now that you've been an owner for a while. What your experiences can can be of, of unique value to the league. You know the thing is, you know, in unifications of different personalities of uh, respective positions, you need someone who can connect the dots. You know, and oddly enough, ironically enough, I was put in that position, being a player and then as an owner. And I pull on both sides to try to commun communicate to both sides. Now, those are tough conversations I have sometimes because, you, because the emotions get involved sometimes. And even from my standpoint, you know, you're sitting in those meetings to have the ownership understand that this is what the player is trying to say. There's a certain way you need to say it so they understand it that way. And then on the player's side, hey, look, this is how the business operates. This is the growth. This is the piece of the pie that we need to understand that we need to show and grow it. Now, you have a responsibility, and we have a responsibility. If you don't have that type of communication between two parties, you're going to have a disconnect. And that leads to not being great partners. And I think the opportunity that Adam gave me, and obviously one that we, you know, myself and all my partners, were able to obtain in ownership, was to be able to have that voice of reason. And, you know, pertaining to the game, we understood what the league was trying to do. We understood the, the, the atmosphere around the game. All I said is, you know, I want to have an opportunity to be able to get the game because the energy around the city was so strong to have the game. And Adam really listened. But those are the types of situations that when I'm sitting, you know, in this suit and communicating with the other owners, I'm also have shorts and a T-shirt or tank top being able to have the, you know, the player's perspective, uh, that's very unique. And I great, take great pride in being able to do that. It's not an easy job because you have a lot of egos on both sides. And here you got an egotistical guy in the middle. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a hard thing. But so far, knock on wood, it's been a great conversation. You know, no disharmony within you know, the, the, uh, the players and the ownership. We've been able to maintain the relationship throughout the process, the growth, and everybody's happy about you know where the game is. I think that's a you know, that's a credit to Adam, that's a credit to the players' association, Chris Paul, and Michelle Roberts, and here I am stuck right in the middle, being able to understand both forces. Uh, that is you know that's the health of where we are, and that's unique, uh, and I think hopefully that will continue as long as you know my voice is still loud. Sure. I good, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, with the, I'm with the program. Michael, um, you got a couple all-stars coming in this weekend. Uh, Russell Westbrook just got, uh, you know, 10 um, 
straight triple doubles. Sure. And, and you got James Harden with 30, 30 point games. I'm just curious from a player's perspective, which one do you feel like is is was harder to achieve, and which one was more important? Yeah, that's, that's but that's okay. That's okay. I know. I figured it was going to get that. Both. They all both hard. You know, and uniquely, um, it shows the talent. You know that we have within the league. Uh, it shows still the progression uh, within the league. I'm very proud about what both guys have done uh, because they're making their mark uh, for the league, and I think it really helps the growth of the league, um, which is harder from a player standpoint. Six championships, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> Take one more. Michael, in, in 1988, you, you won your first All-Star Game MVP, and you did it in Chicago. I'm just wondering if you had kind of reflections on, on that moment, playing on your home court, and then if you had an idea of what the, what opportunity was in front of Kemba on Sunday. You know, it, it, the team that you play with, you know, when I played with uh, in 88, they were very uh, supportive of, obviously, the, the opportunity of playing within you know, your city. Uh, they weren't trying to give me anything. But the energy that, uh, that you have as a, as a guy playing at home was so high, and you want to impress all the people that support you all the time, and that carried you right into the game to a point where I couldn't miss a shot. My energy, I was stealing the ball I was doing. So you wanted to you know, play that respect to the, to the crowd. I don't think that's going to be any different for Kemba. Uh, Kemba's going to go out there and play as hard as he can to represent the people in this city. Does that equate to a champ to to MVP? I don't know. Uh, I would assume that everybody on his team would love to see him do it, but I don't think they're going to try to cater to, to that because that's something that you just it doesn't seem natural when you do it that way. Uh, I think even when I won the MVP in Chicago, it seemed natural because that's the way I played, uh, and everybody played that way. I would hope that would be the same situation for Kemba, and that we're not trying to give it to him. If he earns it, he earns it. You know, he's deserving of it, but you have to play the game to, to deserve it as opposed to someone giving it to you. Can you explain what it's like to host the game on your birthday? Will it be a big birthday celebration on that day? <laughs> it's a constant reminder that I'm getting old. Uh, it's amazing. I always, uh, the, the All-Star game is always around my birthday. Uh, I wish it could be postponed a week or before or after, but, you know, it's, it's a constant reminder that the game is evolving. I'm evolving as a, as a person, um, and it's a one time where I can bring everybody in and celebrate and uh, enjoy the game of basketball all at the same time. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I got a lot of family here, uh, not enough tickets, but you know, it should be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks.